There are thousands of ways to modify your weapons in Fallout 4, but it's not a perfect system. For example, you can't put a sniper scope on a 10mm pistol and make it a plasma scatter gun that uses mini nukes. But what if you could? Can you beat Fallout 4 with the impossible gun? Back in April, Mitten Squad turned 9 years old. But here's the thing, I made Mitten Squad when I was 16, and on May 15th, I turned 26. And you know what that means, we can officially celebrate 10 years of Mitten Squad on a technicality. And what better way to do that than with the release of the Fork Barbarian's cooler older brother, the Nuclear Fork Barbarian made by Makeship. The plush is on sale now for $27.99. This is a limited run product that will only be on sale until July 1st. If you don't buy one by then, it's gone forever. Just to be upfront with you, I'm not talking about any one specific gun. Impossible Gun refers to what happens when you combine the Any Mod Any Weapon mod with the Enemy Weapon Randomizer mod. You yourself can create just about any weapon you can imagine, while enemies will spawn with weapons more akin to something you'd find in Borderlands than Fallout. It's a beautiful nightmare adventure through and through. Unfortunately though, it doesn't apply to melee weapons, which is a crying shame. I really wanted a 10x scope, laser attachment, and to strap a fat man to the end of a bat and make it go Nagasaki with every swing, maybe in another life. The story of Mr. Impossible begins in the bathroom, as all great stories do. I went with a preset character. Looks don't matter when your very existence questions reality itself. But like they say, perception is nine-tenths of reality, and my perception is a little bit off. Regarding my specialties, I made some unorthodox choices, which would upset my extended family, given what religion they follow. Then the bombs fell. I tried my hardest not to be on the platform, briefly became Mr. Freeze, dead spouse, and escaping the vault as usual. I'm gonna jump ahead a few minutes, because it took a bit for me to get this mod to work. Don't worry though, you didn't miss much. We're just inside the Museum of Freedom now, and the madness has begun to get its ass in gear as the weirder weapons are starting to appear. Gotta point out that I can't mention every outlandish weapon I get my hands on. We'd be here for ages. Just be a brave little individual and let your eyes carry the load for you. Oh, you can't carry things on your eyes? Sucks to be you. After speaking to everyone's favorite gravy, I headed outside to dispatch of the raiders and the other assorted riffraff with both the power of enthusiasm and this weird ass thing that spat fire. Turns out that I can be one-shotted by the Deathclaw. That's a shame. It took me camping in this building while I spat fire through an open window because lizards aren't allowed indoors. With it dead, I was off to the police station to find the once and former Buzz Lightyear. These Neanderthalic puppies managed to kill me once, which surprised me. Completely randomized weapons doesn't mean they're all gonna be good. In fact, a good number of them aren't. I did make a quick stop to play in the sewers like I did in North Carolina as a youth, as well as end a bear. I stopped by Grey Garden to pay the plant-loving robots a quick visit. We haven't seen them for a while, and we won't see them for a long while again. I happened to find this gun that kicks serious ass. Had a convo with Dance, we traversed the landscape towards Arcjet, battled the synthetics inside, and I made the smart call of engaging the rocket firing test without sealing the blast doors. You've got to be pretty far away from the doorway to not get cooked alive. There's nothing else we can do with Dance anymore. Best head to Park Street Station to find he who shall not be named. Righteous Authority looked pretty weird by the way. In retrospect, a mod that lets me swap legendary weapon effects would have been a great third addition to this challenge. I'm not a racist like my dad, but these green people simply shouldn't exist. By sheer happenstance, I found Diamond City first. A guard was dead, I'm cosplaying as a baseball now, and took the opportunity to get Piper as a companion. The Triggermen, even those with a custom trigger installed, are simply no match for my silenced pipe flamethrower. It makes sense, they're wearing highly flammable cloth, and are also highly susceptible to being lit on fire. I found a special little toy deeper inside, something that could easily render this run a joke. It's essentially like an explosive merv that I've got 400 rounds for. I used it in here a bit, but I didn't rely on it. Found another flame gun on the way out of this hole with Nikki. It's fun, just ask any burn victim, and if they say otherwise, they're lying. This is actually a really fun challenge, and I'd recommend you try it if you can install mods. Though sadly, as I said, it doesn't apply to melee weapons. I wanted to put a scope and a laser sight on a bat, damn it. Skinny Malone and Darlene, do they burn so bright and so beautifully. Back at Diamond City, I spoke to the broken man, got the key to Kellogg's house, instructed the dog to go dog go, go to heaven, I'll be there soon, and headed out to Fort Kellogg. Unlike usual, I didn't find it early, so I had to put on my big boy jorts 
and find it the natural way. Upon entering the fort, the real game began. Robots made of metal are less susceptible to being lit on fire than their fleshy counterparts. Still gets the job done though, it just takes more effort. Time it took, it definitely did, for me to push my way through the fort to reach the big cheese himself. I bet you thought I'd use the merv on him. Fat chance, idiot. Nope. I've got a gun that spits lead faster than a drunk marine. Didn't even need to use jet or psycho like usual. Just good old fashioned American ingenuity. His gun looked like something out of Borderlands. The big blimp, I call her Martha, arrived in the Commonwealth. I returned to Diamond City where Nick, Piper, and I ran through our options. We decided we'd have to move to a better neighborhood, and I was off to Apartments.com to find a better place to live. At a place whose name I don't care enough to rewind the footage to find because I forgot what it was, Dr. Amari invited me into Kellogg's Memories, where I played on the Dream Noodles and learned that the Institute uses teleportation to get from point A to point C without touching point B. Only one creature of habit on this planet knows exactly what to build to get inside the Institute, Virgil, out in the glowing sea. Out there, oh yeah, I 100% used the Merv whenever possible to kill everything I came across, including all the glowy boys hiding out at the Crater of Adam. I killed them not because they're a cult or because I can, but because it isn't fair that they can sleep in radiation and I can't. Well guess what, now they're doing the big sleep. Inside the green man's hidey hole, he gave me the base schematics for getting into the Institute, and I was off to kill me a courser. Once hit out in Greenwich, and luckily for me, I already discovered it. Now I've just gotta scale the damn thing and kill the princess sitting atop it. Gunners are lurking about. In some runs, they gave me trouble, but this gun is godly. I worship it. I die for it, just like all the things it made die for me. Slowly, and without the aid of Shirley's ass, I persevered through the various levels of this tower and approached the courser. He didn't stand a chance against me, and neither did the hostages. I took his chip, gave Piper a better coat, and went outside to the roof to see just what this Merv can do. It's effectively a real nuclear warhead, not one of the babies. Back in Good Neighbor, Amari examined the chip, told me I'd need help from the folks living under the church, so I found the church, eliminated the ghouls therein, and had the railroad examine the chip on the condition that they get to keep it. Fine by me, I'm not a chip guy anyway, I'm a cheese its man. From there, it was back out to the glowing sea to get Virgil to give me the plans for phase one of Operation Go Blink Yourself. After that little stunt, I was off to continue my work for the self-righteous military. Guns are their thing. They're the logical choice. First stop, Dance and I, will be taking a ride on Martha as we fly up to the Pridwin to meet Father Maxon. His first job for me was to get acquainted with the folks on the blimp, then clear out Fort Strong with great intensity and I'd be happy to oblige. Naturally, I cleared out the first trunk with the Merv. It made quick work of them all. Unfortunately, I could not use that tool inside the facility. For that, my favorite fast firing gun that fires fast. Though I did attempt to use it in the basement just to see if I could, but I couldn't survive the powerful blast in close quarters. This might as well be the giant rocket I blasted Dance with earlier. Turns out that was a lie. With the lie complete and the job done, I returned to the big man in the sky for my next job. Now, it's finally time to get my ass into the Institute. I told Max about the plan, gave Ingram Virgil's painting that is definitely not fridge-worthy, and built the base component of the molecular zapper. Just before that, as I was traveling from the bird to the base, I got slapped on the fanny with a five minute long loading screen. That was fun. Following the construction of the base, I generated generators out of thin air, connected the dots to route the power to where it wants to go, stepped on it, and like some sort of voodoo magic, I got inside the Institute. Once inside, I met Father, my son, for the first time since the last time, and for the first time in Mitten Squad history, took the quest route for getting Madison Lee on our side. She wants proof of what happened to Dr. Virgil. Gotta get your way into the FEV labs for that proof. I handled it with unfathomable beauty and grace like a human bidet. I implore you to get one, get wet, get wild, buy a bidet today, and have an adventure tomorrow. Once inside, I found all of Shrek's babies all grown up stuck in test tubes. Sucks for them. The proof was not in the pudding. It was on a terminal. With Madison Lee satisfied, I had to meet all the institute leaders so Lee could upgrade my pit boy to let me get out of here. Didn't see that one coming, even with the help of my binoclears. Then, because Uncle Polly is a good Christian boy, don't ask how an uncle can be a boy, I gave Virgil his serum that would render him a man in due time. I never came back to check on him. Next, Ingram takes a turn for the worst. Poor girls running on empty, and not in the way you think. Her batteries are running on empty, mine too. Luckily for us both, there's a facility way down south that's got magnets capable of fixing her legs. Of course, I'm actually talking about Liberty Prime. He's the large individual who needs knee surgery. 
a lot of mutants eager to off themselves down there. Fun fact, this gun doesn't actually fire bullets. I don't know what it drops, but it's not bullets. Oh f I I should've went and looked for the thirst zapper. It took me a few minutes and a few nurses' lives to get down to the bottom of the hospital where the magnets are being stored together in a box. Here's a fun thing to try. Get some of those tiny, hyper-powerful magnets, insert one rectally, and then swallow the other one and wait for something funny to happen. With multiple mentioned magnets installed successfully, Uncle Paul is a damn good physician, the time had come to travel to the Sentinel. And I'm not talking about Willy. That's an ALF reference for the all of you who didn't get it. Same old story, Aunt Merv carried me on her thick shoulders all the way through Greenland. I decided to use Kellogg's favorite gun down there just because I can. It fared well against all the dead guys. Those bullets do look exceptionally large. As for Adam's glory and her faithful companion, I'll give you a hint, they're dead. You won't believe this, and Woody would either be heartbroken or relieved to know that Peloton Dance is in fact a non-believer. That's correct, he's a synth. After speaking to Maxon about it, he ordered me to track him down and do to him what those hogs almost did to that kid before Yellow Labrador stepped in to take the pain. Before leaving, Scribe Halen broke rank and dared to ask me questions, as if I'm not already asking questions. Doesn't matter, orders is orders, and I'll die before I let the world fall into disarray. In a twist that shocked even me, these measly turrets somehow managed to kill me. They paid for that with their destruction. Then, at last, I entered the bunker, descended down into the earth, and found a naked dance. I could hardly stand to look at him. By God was he hideous. I approached him and did what some people call scorched earth, but I prefer the covenant from Halo's terminology of glassing him like he was a planet, and if he was made of sand, he would have been glass. Back in the sky, I informed Maxon of a job well done. He congratulated me for performing this task successfully, and I spoke to the captain on the deck below. He had an exceptionally special job for me. Sorry Thomas, there's no room for armored choo-choo trains in this world. The railroad's gotta go. Once again, I went to the Old North Church to lay waste to all the inhabitants inside. I started, and this is gonna blow your mind, with those upstairs, as they had to pay dearly for existing in my world. I lit them on fire with my dragon breath. At least, I did initially. Didn't fare too well in there when I tried that little maneuver on them. I could have used Aunt Merv on them, but that would have been overkill and this is a place of God. A long since dead one, but still. Instead, I returned briefly to Kellogg's Borderlands gun as it could one hit KO even the railroad agents wearing the coats. Downstairs, I used a few grenades on them as well as a missile launcher for a bit. Then this weird ass sniper type gun that reloads with shotgun shells. In the inner sanctum, I made a few attempts at sending in the ant to do my dirty work. The plan was to blast in the Pam's room like a rapid freight train, then use the wall as cover. Some attempts later, I swapped over to whatever the hell this thing is. Like some undiscovered species of caterpillar in the Amazon rainforest, it might not look good, but it's damn effective. Pam, sadly, died when I turned her entire room into the second nuclear holocaust. I sent all of their forces down to the big train yard down below. Back at home, the captain thanked me for doing what had to be done. I spoke to Proctor Ingram about how exactly we should go about reaching the end of the line. We're not heading there yet, we've still got work to do. That made Paul sad. Then, I stocked up on as much ammunition as I could afford, despite taking the perks to increase the amount of ammo you can find in containers. That made Paul happy. Actually more like eager to slay bitches, but that's pretty much the same thing as far as I'm concerned. We're headed to mass fusion. Since since and more since loitering atop the surface of the mass fusion building. The machine turret I had in the bird was surprisingly effective at destroying them. Once we landed, we fought through what remained inside. Then I snagged the key card to get into the reactor part of the building deep in the basement. We took our place on the elevator and began our descent. See, I had this scoped gun of some such that was fully capable of killing each synth in one shot. So instead of using a stealth boy and hiding like a scared dog, I used a stealth boy and attacked like a feral dog. Having a perk point left, I used it to unlock the expert lockpick skill to open this door, specifically to avoid riding the elevator again. Then I parkoured my way from platform to platform and headed down to retrieve the beryllium agitator. Radax, right away, a bit of thievery, and you're ready to face the sentry bot and then the assaultron twins. Take a guess at what happened here. I'll give you one guess, okay? Now I'll give you one more. Did you get it? You better have, because there will be a quiz later. With the agitator stored somewhere safe, I rode back up, cleared out a few more synths, and returned back to the airport knowing that I'd done good and prepared for what's to come, which would be unlocking Liberty Prime's full potential. We are ready to march to CIT Ruins now. Just before heading out for realsies, I decided to console command it up. 
don't worry I made a backup save, just to see if my Aunt Merv could take out Liberty Prime. Much to my surprise, the old girl didn't even flinch. I tried in vain to assist her in aiding the synths that spawned along the way, but there was really no point. She attacks before I can. Before long, we found ourselves at CIT, down in the innards, a twist of sorts. Fate did a bazinga on me. My equal was lurking somewhere down below. Someone seemed to have a weapon that matched my Aunt Merv. Perhaps her estranged husband, who left her because he wanted to be her little bunny rabbit and her his Lenny, but she thought he was a sick freak. There's a way down through the tunnels on the left where Ingram, Max, and I could attack from a different angle. Sadly, I couldn't find Uncle Rasputin's weapon. Inside the room with the scientists and monkeys gave me more trouble than I'd expected, even with you know who's help. Somehow, the massive blast didn't kill as many people as I'd liked. I, however, had this nifty little thing that fires insanely fast. However, someone, another someone, had a big explosive weapon, so I swapped over to a missile launcher. Eventually, our forces entered the vicinity and started mopping the floor with these chumps. In the main chamber, you already know. Then, I had to see off father before he began his great journey. In a poetic end for my son, I killed him with his kidnapper's gun, then proceeded to make my way to the reactor chamber, where I fought through the Institute's toughest and last remaining forces before planting the explosives and teleporting to safety. For reasons I'm still not sure of myself, I agreed to let the little sh come with me. We teleported to atop a building, we nuked the Institute, and I beat Fallout 4 with a multitude of impossible guns. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything, leave a dislike. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. Thanks to the champion tier supporters, as well as other channel members, for making videos like this one possible. You can join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.